Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a morning market update for uh, Friday, September 28th, 2018. Uh, I wanted to wait till trading kicked off to uh, see what happened after the open, and uh, a couple things to point out. Uh, I know I did an update yesterday. The big levels I pointed out on SPY, or at least what I think are like the near-term levels to watch. But here's a couple other charts, a couple other things to watch, some developments. I'll talk, touch on gold and some other things real quick here. Uh, ES, starting out here, these are the S&P 500 E-mini futures. This is a... Um, 60-minute uh, chart, and as you can see, there's a pretty pretty well-defined uptrend line as well on ES right here. So let's watch this. We're flirting with it now. There's been a couple of brief pops below, but I think this line fits pretty well. And so if we get an impulsive move down, and that will also uh, roughly coincide with that uh, level that I was watching recently um, on SPY. I'll get to that in a second. But uh, so basically, let's just look at these lows, these recent lows being taken out. We're, we're below that trend line now, and I think this will do the trick. And you can see these are my targets. That would be my minimum target down there, about 28.70.50. Uh, if you're an ES trader, 28.26, and about 28.00, possibly, if we can get the uh, ball rolling to the downside so that's something to watch we had divergence not very strong we had equal highs on the ppo and rsi uh, with higher highs in price and that still is negative divergence uh, because you had the higher highs in price okay nq 60 minute chart uh what i'll be watching or what i am watching i should say now and i need to add some lines to this chart uh we had a divergent high here on the 60 minute recently and i uh, wanted to add that real quick to show you guys all right so here's our last divergent high on the 60 minute time frame before that this chart's not all marked up because uh these these contracts rolled i just showed you the continuous contracts on the s p um and uh, these are the uh, december contracts on nq uh, there it is. Uh, and by the way, the continuous on ES are the December right now. And if you're not sure what that means, you can, can look that up. Uh, but these are the actual uh, December contracts. There's your divergent high. And again, it's uh, you know pretty pretty clear history. You get these divergent highs. Uh, nothing's guaranteed, but that's where you usually get your corrections from. Uh, so there's the most recent divergence. I can make it clear here. Here's your divergence line from this point to this point. And so what I'm watching is this line. It's pretty well defined. There was that one spot. Uh, this is that FOMC. I was this it? Uh, no, maybe I'll have to. No, no. I think the FOMC was here. Uh, that was a brief spike right there, and it's just a candlestick uh, tail or a shadow, and uh, so you can easily exclude that. I have a lot of reactions. So, anyways, this is a trend line I think worth watching. You can see we're wedging up, and. Um, you know, look for a break of that. So a break of this trend line with that level on ES I just showed you. You have the divergent high there, and that could certainly set the stage for the next uh, correction. And uh, I, I think this one probably carry us down at least here to the 76, 30, uh, 75, 30 level right there, um, and quite possibly come in and test these lows again. And this is starting to become, or it is an important level. I highlighted lots of reactions here, and that's about 74, 37 or so reactions back here, reactions back here. Um, so there's a level if you're a dip buyer and we happen to get there um that's where you want to step in that's solid support uh if you think there's more downside and you think the divergences uh that are out there on the daily chart weekly time frames are going to play out for more than that then uh as a short side trader you want to position short or add to a short or maybe hold off and wait for a break of that level but that's those are the targets i'm looking at now um, minimum target here if that trend line breaks or when that trend line breaks uh, then 74 37 or so uh, and possibly we'll just have to see how the charts look a break of that level and that would open the door probably for a much bigger sell-off if that happens okay here's the spy 60 minute chart and um you can see this nice uptrend line here, uh, breakdown, back test. Uh, as I mentioned recently, there's an impulsive move, back test uh, on near perfect failure at the trend line back test, and that 291.62-ish. You know, I like I said, it's more important now. You have a little pop above it yesterday that failed, so you want to wait for that high, that previous high to get taken out. Yesterday's high, um, but I mentioned th these being the uh, levels that I'm watching for the spy. But of course, take in, take into account all those other levels I talked about. NQ, um, you know, the you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the trend, and um, you know, it's like uh, in this in the uh, you know, the U.S. courts, you know, defendant is innocent and proven until proven guilty. Well, an uptrend is an uptrend until we have clear evidence, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt 
uh, right now because it's this has been a resilient trend. So you want to see not just SPY breakdown is what I'm getting at. You want to see QQQ breakdown. Uh, like I said, QQQ was broken down a while back on the daily time frame it's been testing, but we still have some 60-minute, some minor trend lines and support as to, to, take, uh, to be taken out as well. So there it is, about roughly 289.39. And uh, that should open the door for sell-off. That will also take ES below that trend line I just showed you. And uh, you can see some levels here at minimum, I think. Forget about that line below, that 288.66. I don't think it'll come into play. It is minor support. But I think uh, if this level goes uh, with conviction, we go down here at about 287.12, uh, 285.63 and ultimately this trend line here that's a trend line that'll show I think if I go to a longer term chart yeah that's a trend line off the early April lows so that would be again my preferred swing target where you know if you're a swing trader not a very active trader you don't like to cover at the micro levels reverse cover play the bounces and you want to just swing down and we're talking about uh, roughly 2% um, which is certainly, if you leverage it up, it's worthwhile for a swing trader, whether you're trading ES or NQ. And, you know, I've always told you guys I'm not a big fan of trading the sp uh, SPY or ES because it's so diversified, whether you're bullish or bearish. When you're bullish, you have steady eddy dividend stocks, utilities, other things that drag it down to the upside when the tech stocks are, you know, doing most of the heavy lifting. And likewise, during a correction, when the tech stocks are following the high, you know, the high the high beta stocks are falling then you have those steady eddy low beta stocks holding it up uh, so that's why i think uh, as far as indexes go uh, qqq or iwm you get more bang for your buck on the up and down side but those are the levels to watch and qqq uh there's that same you know i did an update yesterday not a whole lot has changed we've been back testing back testing back testing rolled off and now we're back to that uh well actually we pounded right off at that 184 86 level it was a 61.8 uh, percent Fibonacci retracement you can see here and I'm talking about this move down uh, from the highs well, that's ugly from that high to that low uh, we failed there once twice we took it out and it's also like I, I always say resistance once taken out becomes support so that is support now uh, it has a lot of reactions to validate it um, bullish if QQQ can hold it and continue on up. I mean, we're not going to back test forever. Eventually, we'll move above that trend line. I think if we get up above these recent highs, that opens a door for, you know, a test or a takeout of those previous highs. That's been the trend recently. When you get close enough, it's like a magnet. You're going to go ahead and get sucked up there and do it. But, <coughs> excuse me, until then, we haven't taken it out. And, um, you know, watch for a break of that level. Uh, the, the, there's no reason that uh, bulls shouldn't be able to defend that. And if they don't, it's not good. Now I want to show you one other thing that's, I, I think, interesting. Uh, start here with this. On on Wednesday, uh, before the FOMC meeting, or was it right after? I don't know. This is time stamped. We can tell right here. Okay, right after, 2.55 p.m. I, I posted this chart in the trading room uh, showing this trend line with my expectation for a break. And then a move down to these three target levels. Uh, we did do that. Let's go to the QQQ 15-minute chart. That was uh, there's that fade. And as I often talk about, that's part of the post FOMC noise. Uh, you get these you know sharp moves. Whips all signals are common. So we did fall we, almost to that third target. We hit the second, closed about right on it after bouncing back just above the third target. And what's interesting is we snap back above that trend line, and you can see it's still. Um, because this was a whipsaw signal, that trend line was still respected. Uh, there it is. Uh, and then yesterday afternoon, we broke that trend line right here. Broke down. Uh, we failed at this resistance level. F tried to pop above it, 186.13. Couldn't hold it. And then boom. Uh, so now you have uh, that first target, that 184.85 level I've been watching. That was effectively hit at the lows today. We came a couple pennies above it, it looks like. Uh, so these are levels to watch right now on QQQ. 184.85, uh, that opens the door for a move down to... Um, I think uh, this continues to play out. We come down here, uh, probably that 183.70 level. But these, once again, are targets. Um, if, again, uh, on a break below 184.85 or the next objective short, uh, I would keep tight stops on it because we're getting close to taking out the highs. If we happen to bounce back to that 186.13 level, uh, you might get a short entry there. It's not the highest probability, but it would give you a good risk-reward ratio if you if you took a short there with a stop not too far above the highs. 
And, you know, if you're buying dips and you bought this dip, there's support right there. There's the next support and the next support. So uh, there's some levels to buy as a dip buyer, or you can add to a position if you take out those highs there. But um, right now, uh, nothing's changed as far as the bearish nature of this uptrend line. You had d negative divergence right here. Uh, you had the divergence when you had the breakdown, and you still had divergence yesterday when we pushed up to the high. So there it is. Just like you had bullish divergence down here, bearish divergence or negative divergence, bullish divergence. Uh, so uh, the, based on the scope of this divergence, I think we can get some more downside there. But uh, like I said, we have to take out 184.85. And that, that uptrend line I just showed you on NQ. So that's why I say even if you don't trade NQ or you don't trade QQQ, you trade one or the other, keep an eye on both. It only makes sense uh, because the trend has been bullish recently. Wait for both or the latter of those two levels to break, and that will give you a higher probability entry. In other words, less chance of shorting a whipsaw signal or a break on one that was not confirmed. Maybe uh, QQQ breaks 184.85 right as NQ is testing that key support line I showed you on the 60-minute chart, and NQ holds it and bounces. Well, then you're going to get a whipsaw signal. That's why I like to look at all these charts. A SPY, QQQ, uh, NQ, ES, um, E-mini futures and uh, even the small mid caps. And speaking of small caps, really nothing new to report. We're still uh, below both trend lines there and that 169.70 level. Um, IWM is trading virtually flat, so nothing's changed there. And let me just look at SPY daily. And we're still below this minor uh, uptrend line right there. Uh, you can see the candles there. So really not impulsive selling, and that is because, or at least in my opinion, as I showed you, when I look at the charts of the future, you know, we can draw trend lines are subjective. I think these are the, you know, the the most fitting or accurate trend lines I can draw on SPY and the one I showed you on ES. But as I started the video, I showed you ES uh, is really right at trend line support. It needs a little bit more of a nudge. QQQ, uh, same story. So therefore, you need to see those futures break down. And really, we don't need much. It's the way I view it right now. This market... Um, just needs a slight nudge to the downside and it should crack those support levels and that selling should come in. But, uh, you know, it's been resilient lately. So let's just watch and, and uh, see what happens. But I do these videos and I like to do them in advance because if it does break, uh, if those levels do give way, I it's my belief that we'll probably have a pretty swift uh, waterfall type sell-off, you know, big red candle. And, you know, in trading, you have to be either proactive or if you're reactive, very fast. If you wait, uh, most times you're, that move will happen so quick and then boom, you're already at this support level right here. So what do you do? I mean, at most you can maybe game it for a bounce. Um, and then the next sell signal will be on a break of that, uh, that trend line. Again, that's that longer term trend line, I think, off the early April lows. Uh, so you know what we'll do? We're going to wrap, I'll wrap this video up here. I'll put it out on the uh, right side of the chart for members as well as <clears throat> on the YouTube channel. And then I will cover, as I stated early in the video, I do want to do updates. I'm seeing, you know, a lot of, a lot of things out there that we should be watching in, on the precious metals, gold, silver, platinum, GDX. Um, what else am I seeing? Uh, the, oh, some, some developments in the euro, U.S. dollar, uh, oil, natural gas. Um, and then there's a couple sectors I want to highlight as well, potential trade ideas and uh, maybe some individual stocks. So I will follow up with a separate video or charts uh, for members of Right Side of the Chart as uh, soon as possible. This has been Randy Finney. Hope you enjoyed it.